in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another, I hope that it is a rather exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this particular program known here on the internet as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snuppin' Up 7. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Tali Ibn Ra. Success. What is success? There are many interpretations. There is definitely a definition that you may find in the average dictionary that will, of course, describe what success is. But for many of us, success is seen in many different forms, many different ways. However, in this world, and when we speak upon this topic, of which I usually speak about race relations and religion and things of that nature, people always talk about success. They always tell me that I am jealous or I am too lazy. So I envy and I am jealous of those who are successful. So my question to these persons, and they really don't describe exactly what is success. What does it mean to be successful? If you are in school and you are participating in a science project, whereas you must find some chemicals that will turn a certain, uh, let's say, turn water in a tube blue but all you get is red, but when you finally choose the correct chemicals that will give you the proper reaction, then your water turns blue, then this is an example of success. Success is your ability to accomplish a goal. So you have those who say another is jealous because you have accomplished a certain goal. But goals are always not just singular. A goal is plural. Goal. So success can be many, many different things. When many of these people tell me that I am jealous or envious of success or I cannot be successful. Well, even on YouTube, if you are able to get a hundred people to listen to you, that could be successful. If you are able to get one person to listen to you, that could be considered successful. It is the accomplishment of a goal. However, what is the sense? And my question, what is the sense of the accomplishment of these goals so they can only benefit someone else? So they can only benefit another people other than your own people. You want to feed with your success somebody else before your own people. So are you really being successful? 
when another person benefits from your being able to obtain a certain accomplishment to adhere to some type of goal that you spawn in your your mind and in the makeup of what these people call success it usually is the ability to acquire material things I go to school to college to be a doctor am I really looking for to help heal humanity is my real concern with making sure that my fellow man is in a position where I can help them so they can endure or be healed from their illness, their sickness, their suffering? Or am I going to school to get a good job so I can acquire material things? I don't want to sing and dance just because I want people to enjoy my music. I want to become a millionaire so I can acquire material things. What is the purpose of your success? What is the purpose of your accomplishing a goal? To acquire material things. So I am jealous of you because your success allow you to acquire material things and I am jealous and I am envious because you have a brand new car and I'm taking the bus. You have a brand new house and I have to rent a room in somebody's house. You have brand new alligator boots and I have a $5 pair of Converse. So I am jealous of your ability to acquire material things. But yet you are drunk you are a porn addict. You are a dope fiend. You are a whoremonger. You are a pedophile. You are greedy. You are selfish. But you are successful. You are, also a, you are also successful being a drunk, being a porn addict, being a rapist, being a murderer, being a gossip spreader. You don't talk about that type of success. Exactly what do you mean when you say somebody is jealous and envious of your success, your ability to acquire material things, but you fail as a human being? The ability to feed yourself, the ability to feed off of your own grandizement. You're being an individual. Come look at me. Look what I do. It's all about you. Nobody else. When you look up at the marquee at the theater. You enjoy seeing your name. Who cares about your co-stars. It's me. Success in this world. Is extreme greed. And then you give a little charity. Less than 10% of your material things that you gather. So it, so you think that you don't look like you greedy. To make you look like you're good. And you're not no good. You're up to no good. And you're good for nothing in your success. So if that is success. I am happy and proud to be a failure. Greedy, selfish, arrogant. That type of success I do not want. And so people like myself who care nothing about material things, then all those who have become a slave to material things and believe the acquisition of material things makes them look successful. Although they have poor character. Although they are greedy and selfish. Narcissistic. 
they are successful. And when one that does not care about that form of success, then we are looked upon as having a problem. We are jealous and envious of them. We are crazy. Because you have to be crazy if you don't want none of this success. You don't want the big house. You don't want the big car. You don't want the money. Money makes me successful. Material things give me value. If I don't have the big house, the big car, able to exploit women, men, and children, put myself in a position to, to look down on others, surely you have a problem if you don't want to look down on others and be supreme over others because I am successful. Success is being a slave to material things. And what is so sad is that your house, your car, your career, all these things are not even living. They don't live. They don't breathe. They don't eat. But you are a slave to non-living things. And those who control, those who make, those who produce these non-living things that you become a slave to, then your success only equates to a human being that has become a slave. And I am not about to. And I could care less. And after 400 years of being physical slaves to other people, you would think that the descendants of slaves born in America would not be interested in any form of slavery. But we have become materialistic living among a material people because that is how they view and describe and that is what success is to them. The one who is able to hoard all the gold Hoard all the silver. Hoard all the water. Hoard all the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That is success for you. You are a slave. A slave to your car. Slave to your house. Slave to pornography. Slave to drugs and liquor. A high class slave. That type of success I don't want. And that type of success proves and verifies that in reality you are a failure in life because you need to be a slave you have to feel and be proud to be a slave in order to be successful you have a need to find material things to give yourself value but just being born is not value enough. Just living is not value enough for you. You're not just being, you're not proud of being a little sperm. And in order to come into life, you beat out how many thousands, if not millions of sperm in order to come into this life. That's not enough. I need my house. I need my car. I need others to look at me because of what I got. So you can feel value. So without your car. Without your big house. Without your successful career. All these different things. You have no value. So you get up on a building. Because you have no money. You have no career. You don't have these things. So you jump off the building. And commit suicide. When all these things are taken away from you. Because you have no value. Your success don't give you life. Your success brings you death. And even within the religion, many of us become successful and we thank God. And we live for God. But our religion just, what's the word I'm looking for? But our religion makes it so that we accept our slavery as God is the slave master and we are happy to be his servants. 
A slave exists only to benefit his or her master. So when you say that I only live for God, that means you give yourself nothing. Everything that you are belongs to God. Then you become the happy slave. As everything that you do, your life belongs to somebody else. A slave lives only to benefit that of another. So our religion teaches us to be good slaves. So that's why it's easy for us to become slaves to other people. And we even become slaves to those things that don't even have a life. A slave to drugs, a slave to alcohol, a slave to our penis, a slave to our vagina, a slave to everything. Success is slavery in this world. And then we are given religion. And that religion verifies and says that it is okay and it's all good to be a slave. I'm not interested. You can have that kind of life all by yourself. So when you see another slave, Somebody that was born on the plantation just like yourself. Who don't care about Masa's house. Who don't care anything about Masa's gold. Masa's education. Masa's, Masa's silver. Whatever Masa got. Slave ain't interested. Slave trying to run away. So you said, what's wrong with you? Just work with Masa. Masa get better. Masa ain't all that bad. That's what you tell the person. Who realize I'm a slave and I don't want that. This life is my life. Forget Masa. So when I tell you. I'm not interested in God. I'm not going to serve no God. This is my life. I don't want to live with God and the Father and live in all his many mansions. I don't want to be in his house. I want my own house. I want to do my own thing. And if you are a child of God and you become an adult, every adult person wants to be able to do their own thing, become independent when you're grown. Then y'all become hypocrites. And as soon as your children get of some age, you want to throw them out the house while you're trying to get in somebody else's house. You won't leave the Caucasian pink people's house. You hold on to the Caucasian people. No, Masa, as a citizen, I, I vote, sir. I, affirmative, give me some affirmative action, anything, sir. I want to be with you, sir. But you grown. That type of success I don't want because it devalues life. It devalues your own potential to beg another man what you could do for yourself and you have the potential to do just what they've done. So all your material things that you get it is because another man, another woman give you the opportunity and allow you to have those things. Because at one time, the only thing they gave you was some shackles on your hands and your feet. But now that the actual shackles are not on your hands and feet, you think that you're free. When the only thing you've done is become a better successful slave. And that you have accomplished very well. Success is never the ability to free the mind. It is never the ability to free your mind from slavery. It is always to direct you and strengthen you. Strengthen your bond to your slave master. Tell God how much you love him. Tell these Caucasian people, I, I will work with you. I love you. Love your enemy. 
Love those who do you wrong. Love those who leech off your life. Because that's what a slave does. You live to benefit other people. Other things. So you live just so that you can get go to the store, to the liquor store, to get you some beer or some weed. Or porn video. Or penis in your mouth. Seeking. Seeking pleasures of the flesh. That's your idea. Of success. Telling your master. Everything is alright. Success. Is being a perfect. Slave. In this world. So if that is success, again, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't need you to holler my name 24 hours a day for me to have value. I don't need your money. I don't need money to make myself feel like I have value. I don't need false friends smiling in my face because they want some of my money. They want to live in my big house, ride in my big car. My mind is free. I don't care what Masa has. The Jesus of the Bible was offered by the devil. And this Jesus was shown by Satan. Look at all this. If you come follow me, I can give you success. And Jesus told Satan, Get behind me, Satan. I'm not interested in this because I know if I stay on the path that I am, I am beyond all these things. I'm looking to go to heaven. And when you look into heaven, you look into the sky sometimes. That is limitless. Not only for you, but your babies, all of that. That you see is limitless. But as long as you are successful. Bound to the depths of hell. Then you have guaranteed that's where your children will be. That's why when you get angry. You always tell your children or somebody. Oh go to hell. They don't have to go. We were born in hell. So you just want to guarantee that's where we will stay. You and I, we should seek to come up out of hell. And we should want to free our mind. Free your mind like a balloon. When you take a balloon and you let the string go, let the string go. Let go of these strings, these material things. Your obsession with celebrity. Sexual gratification, the porn and the liquor. Let the strings go. Get it off your mind so your mind can go free. And as you watch the balloon go into the air, it's free. What does that balloon do? It goes everywhere. It goes anywhere. Because it's free. And a balloon, because it's free, it rises. That's why you have an obsession with getting high, feeling good. But all your attempts at getting high and feeling good is temporary. That's why you got to keep seeking it. It's temporary because it's not real freedom. It's not real pleasure. It's a part of your delusion called success. It's not success. It's Slavery. So you become a slave to sexual pleasure, a slave to drinking, a slave to getting high, smoking weed, a slave to your career. A slave cannot understand the mind of a free person. That's why many of you really can't understand and comprehend much of what I say because it's coming from the mind of a person. Who is free. Free at last. 
free at last. Free from whiting. Free at last. <laughs> that was racist what you said. No. Because it was being born in a racist Caucasian pink society that made me a slave, that make us think that material things, chasing vagina, chasing penis, chasing cars and big houses, chasing material things, they, that is what made us more of a slave. In this society. And we did not create. This, this society. We are victims. And we are successful victims. In fact. The descendants of slaves. Born in America. We have become. The world's most perfect slave. And you have become. Very successful. In doing that. We want to brag about. Having a job. And it's good. All people should want to work and take care of themselves. This I can agree upon. And if you can accomplish earning money to take care of yourself without somebody else helping you, that makes a person feel good. That makes a person feel independent. That is a good thing. But when does having a job cross the line and you become a slave. Because a slave. Had a job. From sun up. To sundown, They had a job. They only had one day off. On a Sunday. And really. They did not have that day off. Because they got together. Singing and dancing for their masa. And we love to sing and dance. For masa. Still to this day. But I'm getting paid a rich slave that don't control, create, produce nothing. Everything that you are benefits somebody else. That what makes you a slave. A happy, successful slave. So what does the time require? What does the time call for? The time requires. And the time now calls for all those who were slaves. Regardless to if you are a black man or woman. But humanity in general. Because we're, we are all beginning to understand. Regardless to our race. Regardless to our gender. Even regardless to our class. Humanity itself has become enslaved. We are slaves. So time, so time requires that these slaves become liberated. And what is a form of liberation according to religious teaching? According to religious teaching, liberation is called being born again. Being born again. You cannot return back to your mother's womb. But it means born again means that you must go through a change. And that change means that when you come out of the womb. Once you go through the process of this change. That you are new. To return back to be born again. And to, re and to return back. To where we once was. Exactly. What we was trying to change from. That defeats the purpose. The purpose of being born again. The purpose of going back to the womb. Is so that we can be. We can return as a new being. It says in. Biblical teachings. You become new in Christ. It makes no sense for you to be born again and there is no change. The problem with us is that many of you, you really love this world. And many of you benefit, you love the materialism. 
You love to feel better than others with your new house, your, your successful career, chasing vagina, chasing penis, getting drunk, raping, lying, stealing, fornicating, adopting. You love those things. You want God, but you want evil too because in this world, evil is glamorized. Ain't it good to be a gangster? Ain't it good to be a pimp? Ain't it good to be a whoremonger? All these things are glamorized. Evil is made to look good in our eyes. We are taught to believe in this religion. We are taught to believe in a God. That very few of y'all can actually have the discipline to obey. I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm a this, I'm a that. I'm a believer in God. But when we look at y'all actions, you just as nasty, profane, down and dirty as the non-believer. In fact, I would say many of you, the majority of you are worse. Because I would be considered an atheist which I am not an atheist because I don't acknowledge God at all. An atheist acknowledges God in order to disbelieve. In fact, in America, atheism is considered a religion. I do not acknowledge these things, period. But even so, I guarantee you that my life, all of my life, has been more clean and more righteous than the majority of these so-called religious believers. So that goes to show you it has nothing to do with the belief in God in order to carry yourself in what they call a moral type of manner. You don't have the discipline because there's something in this world that you love. I don't love this world. Jesus don't have to tell me. Muhammad don't have to tell me. I knew from a long time ago there's something about this world I was born into that I hate. And because I hate this world, it's easy for me to want to be born again. And I'm so proud to say, and I know for a fact, that I have been born again. That's why you don't understand me. Because you might want to be born again. But there's something holding you back. In this world, there's something here that you love because this world, because of material things, have made you successful. What I'm going to do, how am I going to feel without those things that give me value? I don't need cars and money and false friends to have value. There is great wisdom in these books. Bible and Quran, there is great wisdom in religious philosophy. Most of y'all don't use it or don't understand what the what is being said in these books. God would be considered the parent. And a child has the right to Ask questions, and when your mind becomes free, when your mind becomes free, questions arise because you've been living in dirt and filth, lies and deceit, fiction and fantasy for so long. So your mind begins to express questions, and then God is the parent, and you and I, we are the children of God. We have the right to ask our parents questions. We have a right to question God. You say that we don't have a right to question God. That is false. That is deception. The reason why you say that is because you don't have the answer. But any child in your house, they have a right to ask their parents questions. And most of you, if you don't have the answer, or you're too shamed, to tell your child something or you don't know, then you tell the child, 
you try to push them off. They don't have the right to ask you any questions. We all have the right. Why do you think you have a brain? That's what the brain is there for. To ask questions. Because I want to know. But those whose mind is not free. They don't want to know anything. They already think that they know. Because somebody else is doing their thinking. And have done their thinking for them. So I ask God. Or I ask you, you claim to know God. And you say that your God is just. And you say that your God is good. If this is true, why didn't your God tell us that we were born to die? I remember as a child, the first time that I was told that one day you're going to die. How horrible. That's so horrible. To me, that's a cruel joke. Why would you bring somebody into life and you really don't tell them what their purpose is? What is this thing called life? But yet, at the same time, you're going to you're going to die. And then they say that you really don't understand what life is until you are about to die. Then you can't even really enjoy your life. That's why many of you view success as material things. So since you know you're going to die, let me hoard all the cars I can. Let me sleep with all the men I can. Let me sleep with all the women I can. Let me eat all the food I can eat. Let me enjoy myself because I'm going to die. What's the purpose of my life? Work for somebody else. Work my... We don't know. That's why we behave the way we do. Because we don't understand what life is. But this God is so cruel. And I consider it a cruel joke that you would bring somebody into life, not tell them what it is. The human being is the only creature on this planet. Other animals might have an, an idea and they see death. But I don't believe nowhere they don't have the capacity to know that they will die. But we know and we understand death. That's why we as human beings, the human family, have come up due to our fear of death, fear of the unknown. All these stories and fantasy and fiction, these fairy tales, to help us deal with the knowledge knowing that we're going to die one day. And will never be seen again. That what makes things even worse. I'm going to die. And will never be seen again. By nobody. But if you believe in Jesus. If you believe in Allah. You will see the hereafter. You will go to heaven. And you will see. All the ones that you love. In life. All of you will be reunited. And all that. Fairy tale stuff. There's no proof to none. There's no evidence to suggest about no life after death. So we make all these happy stories because we are not happy to know that we are going to die, especially we don't understand what our real purpose, what is life. And you'll never understand what that is because you we live in death. We have never experienced life. We don't know what it is. We are surrounded by death. In fact, 
in religious teaching, in order for us to go to heaven, you must die. In order for us to go to the hereafter in, in Muslim teachings, you got to die. The world that you live in, filled with hate, violence, the air you breathe is poison, the food you eat is poison, the water you drink is poison. You can't trust nobody for real. You're living in the valley of the shadow of death. And you do fear evil. That's why you lock your doors. That's why you buy guns, knives, chemical weapons, bombs. Because you fear death. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. All of this because we don't know what life is. This God gave us life. But we don't know what, what really the purpose is. And you will never know because we are slaves. And a slave mind equals death. But a free mind, once the mind becomes free, then perhaps we will be able to understand what life really is. But under slavery, the only thing a slave lives for is torture, exploitation, and eventually physical death. A slave is dead as soon as they are born. A slave is a victim of those who are able to use their mind. Only a small percentage of people on this planet are really able to use their brain. The majority are controlled by this very small minority. And the majority in reality, we have become a you, we are useless because we are slaves. A slave don't have to have. Listen. A slave don't have to have a free mind. Because a slave is told what to think and what to do. So under religion. You are told what to think and what to do. Being a citizen of this country. You are told what to think and what to do. Somebody else control your brain. Because we are slaves. And again, many of you, regardless to your class, your gender, so-called race, many of us, we are realizing that we have been made slaves. And a slave has no need to understand the purpose of... Oh, wow! A slave has no reason to understand the purpose of life because your life belongs to somebody else. Your life benefits somebody else. So what difference do it make? And why should a slave know? What difference do it make whether or not a slave understands what is the purpose of life when you only exist for the benefit of somebody else? There are, when you look at your brain, and I'm going to bring this to conclusion, I want us to get an image or a picture of a brain. And look at the brain. It may not look very pretty. Maybe that's the reason why it's a skull around the brain, so you don't have to look at it. And the sad thing about it is that this brain, your brain is so powerful. You don't understand and we don't understand its power because all over the world we have been made slaves. So the average person according to biologists the average person only uses about 10% of the 
of their brain power. So you have 90% of your brain that you don't use. The biologists even say, even when we have so-called genius among us, that still really does not go outside of the 10% of our, our of the of the ability of our brain. So here we are, the most intelligent life form on this planet, barely living among the beasts. And when you look at us on a Saturday night in the bars, getting drunk, getting high. You never seen an elephant get high. You never seen a lion get drunk. But the most intelligent life form on the planet getting high, getting drunk. Going into these houses of religion, foaming at the mouth, worshiping imaginary gods. You never seen a pigeon worship some imaginary thing or a cat. Worship something imaginary, foaming at the mouth, believing, making up stuff. If you could understand the power of your brain and understand who and what we really are, you wouldn't have to do that. Instead of worshiping God, you would be God. You have 90% of your brain that you don't use. There should be no so-called genius. Of course, you, you're always going to have people that's an exception, an exception to the rule. But this planet should be filled with genius. The average should be genius. But the average person on this planet we have become slaves and we are slaves. And a slave, there is no need for a slave to know how to think. Your thinking has already been done to you. We educate you in these systems. We're going to teach you how to be a good slave. Your career makes you a slave. Chasing money, chasing vagina, chasing big houses, big cars. You're a slave. They say, the biologists say, the scientists that study the brain, when you see those folds, each fold in the brain, that is a symbol of, a, of, of specific information that is stored that human beings have learned through evolution. You have a computer that you don't know how to use. So you look at me strange and you don't understand and you can't comprehend much of what I say because I've learned and learning how to use the computer. The best computer on the planet. And we cannot be a genius in all things. But the time requires. That the human being. And of course I always say. That the top priority. Are descendants of slaves born in America. But every human being on this planet. Time requires. That we become liberated. Time requires that we become born again. And so the first ones to awaken, the first ones to understand how to use their brain, they must become liberators. They must begin, they must become computer majors. So we can show and teach other people how to use your brain. That's just the beginning. Because we will never in our lifetime, in our lifetime, we will never be able to see 
the real potential of what this brain can do. What is really behind the 90%? Some of us can imagine. And see, sometimes your imagination is in reality or can make what was fictional real. At one time, ancient people imagined. They imagined something like airplanes. They imagined computers. They imagined telephone. They imagined so many different things going under the earth in submarines. This was part of their imagination. But within the 10% capability of our brains, now you don't have to imagine anything. It is a reality. What is hiding in the 90% of your brain? And I want to say this to us as parents. I'm not a parent, but as an adult, I am still responsible for younger people. When I see that they are going in a detrimental direction. Our poor babies, we should allow them to be children as long as possible. Because you will be an adult all your life. You only have a short time to be a child. Some of us want our babies to be little geniuses and all like that. I think that's selfish. And it is wrong for us to deny our babies their childhood. Let them be children. There is no need for our babies to be given information that they really don't need. That's why we are in the condition that we are in. These children, these babies are given information that they are not ready for. They are not ready for sex. And you, they are exposed to sex. They are exposed to so many different things. And they are, they are children. They're, they are not ready. If you want to, we can make and cause our babies to be adults at a younger age. In fact, in nature, as soon as an animal gets to the, uh, matures enough where they can reproduce, they are considered an adult. They are considered grown. So maybe it is best that we put our babies and look at them in a manner where when it's when by the time they begin to reach to puberty, they will almost be an adult. Instead of 18, 20 some years old, we consider them still children. But what I'm basically saying is that information, knowledge given to us, and we are not ready for that knowledge. There is a purpose for life. There is a reason for life. Just like there's a reason for death. There are many questions that we come up with. And instead of uh, fabricating, making up answers, these answers don't come until the appropriate time. What is, re what is required right now is the liberation of the mind. Because right now, all human beings, your mind is shackled. Your mind is enslaved. You are of flesh and blood. But you are much more than flesh and blood. Because without the brain, without the mind, without what some of y'all call spiritual, you would be no more than a rock. No more than any other living thing. But you're living. So we must understand. And grow to understand. What does it mean to be alive. What does it mean. To be able to use. The 90% of our brain. But don't you know. Racism. 
classism, gender bias, all these isms, they hinder the development of a, of a correct mind because all these things were designed to enslave. So we must end slavery. Not only physical slavery, but the ultimate enslavement is mental slavery. And all of us, regardless, again, to race, creed, gender, and so forth, in this world, we are slaves. But there are many who benefit from slavery. There are many who don't mind acting stupid and crazy. So they like things just the way they are. But things can't always stay the way they are. And you don't have a right. And these suckers that's running this planet, you don't have the right to continue to steal the lives of these people that have a right to life just like you do. I'm not going to be your slave. And none of these should want to be your slave also. I don't want a black slave master. I don't want a pink slave master. I don't want a God slave master. I don't want a Martian slave master. I want to be free. So the time has come that all of us be born again. And you will go back to the womb. You will be born again. Transform from a slave and come back out into this universe as free people. We will never see our potential in our life. But we will begin the process so that future generations, if they stay on course and don't fall back, go backwards to materialism and all these isms, we really don't understand and don't know the potential of the human being. It's not a color thing. Not a gender thing. It's a human thing. And we have been made inhuman by somebody, by the powers that be, making slaves out of us. Aren't you tired of being a slave on your job? Working 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours a week, and you don't have nothing. All these people that work every day, you can't enjoy your life. You don't understand what life is and what little that you do understand. Somebody else is, is stealing your life from you. We, sh we all should want an end to this. All of us should want to end to slavery by any means necessary. With that said, I hope that I said something that can make us or cause us to think because a thinking mind is a free mind. I don't, I'm not here to tell you what to think or what to do. I want to cause you to learn how to think for yourself. Because I understand if you can begin to think for yourself, we will all be eventually on the same page. But I cannot expect that from those who are comfortable being slaves. And unfortunately, many of us are happy slaves and would be proud and happy to die a slave because they really don't understand what a slave really is. With that said, thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, the Angel Snub Nub 7. I respect, honor, and really, I love all of humanity. That's why I do what I do. Until next time, peace forever and always, and respect you.